Hey, this is Jacobitz Learning Center. This is an SAT reading comprehension. Let's go on. Uh, before we start, this is a reprint of a test item from an actual SAT, and here's your copy written information here, uh, the U.S. Geological Survey, and some conflict minerals from the Democratic Republic of Congo. And you already see here that it's on 10. Uh, you can only reprint parts of this um, anyway, so we reprinted the article, but um, only because you have to get permission to print from them, the U.S. Geological Society. So this is certainly copywritten material. Um, but anyway, um, I'm not supposed to reproduce it, which means I can't pass it out, but I can share some of the questions from the video. So let's go ahead and take a look that tin is a metal, which you probably already knew, found in nature in its oxidized form of cassiterite. Um, and this cassiterite is a mineral. Okay, that's repetitive, but this is actually came from the article. I don't know why it's in here twice. This mineral has been the main source of tin since the beginning of history. It is still the main source of tin today. Small amounts of it are also found in the sulfide minerals like the mineral stannite. Cassiterite is found in the alluvial deposits. These deposits can be traced in low deposits in association with other metallic minerals. Uh, some people call it cassiterite. Uh, cassiterite is mined or fracked by the place where the ore is broken up by high pressure water or through an excavator. The excavator is a hard rock mining method of digging from the underground mines. Crushed ore is concentrated usually in the co-location with the mine through a combination of flotation, gravity, and magnetic processes to produce a cassiterite concentration which contains 70 to 77 percent 10. Okay, if you saw this and you wanted to answer some of these questions and you already know it's coming from somebody who looks at what goes on in the earth and with geology, the study of minerals, you might be able to answer the next question. So we're going to go ahead and preview two questions here without reading the next. So based on the article, this author would most likely uh, consider 10 to be which of the following and either expensive, practical, complicated, or synthetic. Now, to be honest with you, even though this is a preview, we have not really done question one enough to see. We, he hasn't mentioned how much it costs. He has talked about what it does, which is somewhat practical. So this is probably our best guess right now. He hasn't gotten into the oaring though, so we can't rule this out. And he said it's in its natural form, it was oxidized. So this one can be crossed off already. Okay, and then when we go to the overall structure of this passage, it could best be described as a, a complete analysis of a naturally occurring element, an overview of steps and results of a process, an introduction written for a geology course, an explanation of the solution to a problem. Now let's go ahead and look at this. Has he exposed that tin is already a problem when he says it's a metal often found in nature in its um, oxidized site? Well, we don't know this, but like these first three are ones we want to check off because uh, even though it's called a conflict mineral from the beginning, um, tin wouldn't be the solution because Tin is actually the subject. So uh, maybe we can go ahead and scratch off choice D and try to look at how uh, an introduction written for a geology course, an introduction for a geology course may seem too broad because introduction for geology is going to consider all the mineral, all the minerals like all the minerals such as, uh, you know, um, ore, iron ore, um, copper, 
Uh, it's also going to talk about how geological processes take place, like which kinds of clay, which kinds of, you know, um, sand, terrain, and other things. So I'm going to kind of go check minus here. Okay, already. And then we can go ahead and move on to answer the next part of the questions. Okay, we got up to here, and we were already on here, 70, 77% 10. And... Let's go on ahead and move on. Tin concentrate in the second paragraph. Um, tin concentrate is then smelted by heating it in the presence of carbon to 1,200 to 1,300 degrees. Celsius reducing the cassiterite to 10 metal and the remaining impurities are removed through a refining process, usually the facility co-located with the smelter. And it's a term a lot of people probably aren't familiar with, but even if you don't know what it is, you know that when you mix something, you smelt it. When something is smoke and it's done, so it probably has to do with refining. And then they get right into that and say refining tin involves heating it to temperatures just past the tin melting point, allowing impurities to drop out as solids and then skimming off the pure liquid tin. Refining is done by either heat treatment or electrolytic processes. Heat treatment uses carbon-based fuel as the main heat source, mostly through a reverberatory furnace. Heat treatment is widely used and more widely used than the electrolytic processes, but produces only 99.85% tin. Electrolytic processing involves inserting the smelting tin in an ionic solution and running an electrical current through it. The smelted tin is the anode and the cathode collects pure tin metal. Electrolytic processing is more expensive but provides up to 99.9% tin. Now we have that word that we got to in the first question about expensive and this is the first time that I've seen this word throughout the passage, and they're telling me about how the process is more expensive when you are trying to heat it, melt it, smelter it, mold it, or involves heating it to temperatures. So maybe the process of heating it may be what's expensive, and let's go on ahead and say that, that it may be the process of heating tin more so than tin itself is expensive. And keep in mind, there are metaphors that have nothing to do with the passage of come out. And, you know, as when I was a little girl, my mother would say, oh, anybody can do that and hit that at that tin can because tin was actually considered inexpensive. Okay, so the process may be, and I'm going to go on ahead and write may be here. I'm not going to write anything else and I'm certainly not going to rule out uh, you know I'm not going to rule out that and I'm going to go ahead and put a dollar sign up here I hope it's not too bad so the process may be expensive but tin itself has not been mentioned as expensive and as you're reading that please make sure you know where the word is and what it's used and it's it's a matter of getting practice and being a better reader to understand what they're getting at that this is what is more expensive and not the actual tin. You have to look at where it's put in relation to the passage. Okay, so when we move on, tin is found in everyday life. It is the primary component of solder. Solder is used to combine two pieces of metal, allowing an electrical charge to flow across the connection. Solder is used on every electronic circuit board and it is difficult or expensive to replace. There are some substitutes available for tin, with lead being the most viable alternative. Solder has been made from lead and tin, but since the Safe Drinking Water Act, tin has become the primary metal in solder. Okay, so now we have yet another distinction, and I'm going to leave off here and just put an asterisk here for now, that tin is um, expensive. To replace okay when it's on solder so once again we have to get down to are they talking about like 
Are we talking about exactly where this word is 10 in itself, or is it 10 when it's used as a solder? And these are choices you have to make. Let's go back over here and let's talk about 10 is also a primary component of in food, I'm sorry, in food grade 10 cans manufactured from tin plate. Tin plate is made by annealing molten tin onto a steel sheet. The resulting metal formed in cans is then used in canning food where the tin prevents corrosion and leaching of steel into the food product. Tin plate accounts for about 25% of domestic tin consumption. Due to its malleability, tin is not harmful to humans. Tin is a preferred method of canning and preserving food for long-term so so storage. Substitutes for tin plate plate include aluminum, plastic, and organi organic coated steel. Tin is also used in chemicals and it accounts for 35% of consumption. Now hearing this and hearing all of this, are we still going to stick with tin itself is expensive because if you're using it to can food and you have to produce, although we don't have an answer, you know, Maybe we don't want to limit it and think that the author thinks that it's expensive. Let's move on. The tin, chains, the tin supply chain is complex and is often opaque. Companies report products that they supply to the marketplace. However, they may not describe which of their plants use which heating materials or processes. As a result, some multi-plant corporations may or may not consume or produce all the tin materials reported. Some large companies have multiple plants, which may or may not have been described in sufficient detail to identify their location or the tin material that was processed. For example, information was not available on all tin producing companies and many companies that were reported to have been 10 suppliers could not be confirmed as such. Companies changed, names were referred to imprecisely, changed ownership or went out of business. Now this is good if you're talking about the business, this last paragraph. Okay, now we're talking about a supply chain. We're talking about selling 10 in the market. And they use this word here, which I'm going to go on ahead and highlight. They use the word complex. Okay, they don't say expensive. And one of our choices was complicated. But once again, let's draw it back to the word that it's talking about. And it is talking about the tin supply chain. It is not talking about tin itself. Let us make sure that we are narrowing this question. Okay, then it gets into the business side. And we have not seen a question on the business side. So let's move on and let's think back to our questions. So let's go back and review that question based on the passage. The author would most likely consider 10 to be which is the following we already went over how it's not expensive because that was talking expensive was talking about the process of heating it it's not complicated um and this passage shows something a lot of people should automatically scratch out this synthetic because it went into paragraph one that it was natural okay that's the first line that it said that it tin is a metal found in nature in its oxidized form oxidized means it got some oxygen it is still in its natural form and so this synthetic is out it is still partially of its original element so the only other choice left is this it's not so content complicated we got into how this is connected into solder it's only expensive when it's on a solder board um it's primary message in here so the answer is practical and if you go over the answer key on the sat that is of course the answer let's move on to question two So let's go over question number two. The overall structure of this passage could best be described 
describe, excuse me, as which of the following and a complete analysis of a naturally occurring element. This word complete makes it complicated. You analyzed parts of the element. You showed examples of what it did. So it's not complete. It's actually a partial analysis. And there is a problem. Uh, but it is about a naturally occurring element. So I know people get that right. An overview of steps and results of a process. You had results of a process and you have steps and I'm going to show you where. We already went over why it's not C, an introduction written for a geology course. Okay, a geology course, once again, is on everything. It would not be, uh, it would not, a geology course can't or would not, I can't say can't, it won't, it won't limit to 10. And I should say limited to 10. And we already went over uh, that it's, there's no problem here, is there? There's absolutely not solution to a problem. Problem, if you saw one, was with the companies that closed and they didn't mention the specific ones, so you don't get into it. So let, let's look at how it is an overview and the steps and the results of a process. 10, concentrate, smelted by heating it. And this is the second paragraph. Graph. Here's 10 is a metal found in nature in its oxidized form. Uh, here's where the sulfide minerals, like the mineral stanite, it's, it's comparing this to uh, 10's mineral class. In case you want to know, alluvial is pertaining to rivers. So it's found in river deposits, as a lot of minerals are. Okay, and you know, and then it's and then it gets into high pressure water or through an excavator, and so these are all processes. So your answer is B, and let's go ahead and click that off. And remember, th these are all describing smelted by heating, high pressure water. Those begin to get into a process of how things are done, and um. And I'm going to go ahead and say processes because there are many. You know, first uh, it's found sulfide mineral, then it's given heat or it's excavated. Uh, then you skim it in 10 pu purity measures and they skim off the liquid 10, starting out as solids and then skimming off the pure liquid 10. So we have our answers here, okay? And they're in the passage. If you have any questions, we're the Jacobitz Learning Group front and the beginning of the essays where we're located, you can email us. Thank you so much for watching.